you're nobody in this space. You're starting from scratch, like whatever you may have thought you were before, like that doesn't resonate. Definitely have that weight of what's gonna happen, but at the same time, it's it's exciting because you know I've reached uh, whatever level I am in my in my art field, so it's fun to like almost relearn everything again. Well, first, welcome to the Ween Factory. I was an art director at a surf company, super young, about 19 years old, had a midlife crisis. I traveled the world, went to Bali for the first time, basically got out of America, came back, started painting. And that was around the year 2000 and haven't looked back since. So I'm most proud of probably my public works. When an entire community can, you know, resonate and see something and brighten their day, that 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 affects me a lot more than necessarily like a canvas sitting in somebody's house. I painted a 60-foot Weenosaurus Rex with uh, my character Weensy like riding him like a horse on his back. At the time it was in North Park, San Diego, and it was like, you know, it wasn't the nicest neighborhood. And like I would almost say like that single-handedly started that neighborhood to become, you know, like what it is today. This is actually some of the old Weenimold canvases from, I don't know, those are probably like 20 years old. Uh, Weensy, Ween Bear, Ween Fishman, Ween Bear again, Ween Giraffe, which is in the Kanye video, Ween Bear, Ween Shark, Ween A Flow. The Ween originates back from uh, marketing meetings that I was in, and it reminded me of, like that movie Office Space where you just like, you basically turn your brain off and they're just talking, talking, talking. So what I would do is I would just doodle on my, you know, the 10 page TPS reports. And what spawned out of that was the same character. I was basically drawing the same guy. He had like these giant eyebrows, had fours in his eyes and had like these snaggle teeth. The Kobe piece, that was actually really important as well. So where I, I was in California for the last 20 years, uh, Kobe lived right up the street. So I would see him at the gas station, I would see him at the grocery store. So when he passed, I was like, oh man, like I have to do something. And it, it was actually really cool that the elementary school in Lower East Side reached out and they wanted to do a Kobe piece. So and they also wanted to do Gigi as well. So I was literally bawling my eyes out, crying as I was painting it. Like I could just feel everything about him, feel everything about Gigi. And like, you know, really like it touched me and like, Hundreds of people would come by, you know, and just like people would like lay down flowers and like, so it was like, it was really meaningful for me. My next project, uh, The Weenimals. The Weenimals is gonna be 8,444. Uh, I don't know if people notice, but everything is in, in fours, which is a secret, same as their eyes, has fours in them. What I'm basically doing is taking my main stars, so Weenzy is my number one, Weenosaurus Rex is number two. What I've tried to make individual unique for this project is going back to the roots of why I started creating art in the first place. Weenzy, for instance, he paints graffiti. So there's a lot of like him tagging different ways. Uh, he's a surfer, he's got different surfboards. He's a skateboarder, he's got different skateboards. So it's putting the things that I like into the project. One of the one of ones, you're gonna get a commission painting from me. So there's gonna be X amount of uh, Ween Surf Club surfboards, but there are certain ones where utility is where we're gonna go to wave pools from Kelly Slater's wave pool to the wave pool in Texas, just depending on the availability. Disorder is Nyjah Houston's skateboard brand. So this is actually going to be a deck that's coming out within the next month or two. And if you have this NFT, you're gonna be able to, we're gonna give you a signed edition. I'm gonna sign it and Nyjah's gonna sign it. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to go and skate his park in California with him, which would be really cool too. Bringing in my, my friends, the people that I associate with and like bringing them into the community. And then now you have access to these people and like, you know, let's go to Nyjah's skate park. Like things that necessarily normal people couldn't do, but bringing, since they're a part of my community, then they're welcomed in. This is the OG uh, Weensy. That's, that's basically what started it all for me. That background, this colorway, that's what's on the Nike shoe. If you see, we got Weensy on the bottom, which is really cool. We got uh, glow in the dark teeth. Uh, there's all these like glow in the dark features, which are super cool. 
And then there I am right there, mad steez, baby. My creative process stems from real life. Literally walk outside my front door, I'll see some interesting person. Kind of like shy or whatever. It takes me like, I'll like literally stalk a person like a couple blocks down the road and be like, like, okay, I can talk to this person. And like, like, hey, like, can I like take your photo? Like, I'd love to use you for a portrait. Things that make me laugh, like satirical things, basis of like Kirby enthusiasm, Seinfeld, things that you don't necessarily think are funny or whatever that I feel like comes into my work, especially like with my character work. To be honest, color is a huge part of everything. I was born blind in my left eye which is a big way that I see the world and the way that I paint. So I have a rare condition that only about 60 people known that I know about right now that have the same condition. So this piece is actually a screen print of my actual eye, which everything spawns off of the way that I see. The biggest challenges with this drop is one coding. It's insane how everyone thinks that you just press a button and it auto generates. My drop has over 700 unique uh, elements. Like I'm literally at night like, okay, this layer, if this works on that, okay, if you could subtract this, like it's like if this, then that. So the roadmap, basically it's stuff that I've been doing for the past 20 years with these characters, painting murals. You engage with this mural or whether you take a photo of it, QR code it, post it, they get like, whether it's giveaways or free airdrops, which I think is really cool because it's like, it gives you almost like an Easter egg hunt to go find this and then you're rewarded with these things. I can go back to all the companies I've worked with, Nike for instance, like, okay, let's do another shoe. Merchandise is huge. Literally been making merchandise, anything from snowboard jackets, wetsuits, doesn't matter. Like I can make it all, furniture, I can do it all. So it'd be cool to like get the community involved. What do you guys wanna make? What do you guys wanna see? Like let's, let's create together and make some like really unique shit that's Pretty fun. Other characters I want to bring in, other storylines, and basically everyone converge in the Weenverse and then make a cartoon. Do you think you can do that? 100%. I spent two years on a cartoon with Nickelodeon. I know everything it takes, have a full script, a uh, full storyboard, everything. Went to Nickelodeon early on. They loved it. I ended up getting a development deal for a cartoon. I kind of became friends with the Nickelodeon president. She's like, well, if you use your Weenimal characters and we don't use it, we own them for life. So she kind of deterred me from using those characters. I'm here to have a good time, you know? Like I want to have other people have a good time. So it's like, it's about uplifting and like, you know, just basically brightening people's day. Counterculture with NFT artists was similar to what I felt like when street artists and muralists kind of came onto the scenes. We kind of erupted out of a scene of like, you know, there's like graffiti writers and not necessarily mural painters, but I feel like we kind of like were a counterculture and like we created this subdivision. And then I feel like the evolution of that is now all these NFT artists just kind of like popped up out of, out of nowhere the same way that like kind of street artists did. And I feel like I was at the forefront of the street artists and I'm catching up to what's happening in the NFT space. So it's cool to see that it has become as huge as it is. Like I, I just, it's, it's, it's been so much more attainable, you know, cause you don't need space. You don't need a wall. You literally sit at home and create art all day. And that's what's I think pretty exciting. It's like anyone could do it. Uh, the reason I moved to New York City was to basically take my art to the next stratosphere. I feel like there's gonna be a bridge and I, I want to bridge the, the two gaps between the fine art and the NFT world and even showcase it in a physical space, which I think would be really exciting. And you know, it's it's the evolution of just art in general. So to, to do that and to do in New York City, I think would be huge.